Well, have you ever heard the phrase, a customer is your most important asset, right? Is that really true or is it just a platitude? Well, it's really interesting because if you look at this chart, this chart actually shows the percentage of an enterprise's value. These are all enterprises that were acquired between 2003 and 2013. And it shows the percentage of the enterprise's value that actually is attributed to um, intangible assets around the brand, things that are like trademarks, brand names, product names, and so forth, or to customer value, the underlying value of the customer base of that organization. And you can see here that in the late 2000s, there was a big shift from brand to customer value. And that's largely because customers became much more empowered and were e easily able to learn about different companies and make choices about who they were going to purchase from. And so in 2010, Forrester called this new era the age of the customer. And companies are really competing on that basis. As a matter of fact, 68% of marketing leaders and 86% of the top performers um, say that they are increasingly competing on the basis of customer experience. This has only accelerated during the pandemic because customers are uh, have higher expectations and they're very less patient because they've seen that companies can turn on the dime. We had senior executives from some of our financial services clients talking about how things that would have taken six months to a year to get done in their organizations got happened in three to four weeks. So this is now the new norm for customers and they have very high expectations of companies. Oops, wrong way, sorry. <laughs> so um, there is a direct link between customer experience and financial results. Ultimately, um, if, you are, uh, if you have a good customer experience, com cu customers will stay with you longer, they'll pay more, they'll recommend you to friends, and they'll also be willing to spend more in terms of price for the services that you offer. As a matter of fact, in a recent study, um, U.S. consumers said that they were five times more likely to make a big purchase from a company if they had got a recommendation from a friend or family member than if an online influencer uh, endorsed or used the product. And they were 10 times more likely than if they saw a celebrity endorsement. So this is why it's so important when you hear things like the net promoter score and how likely a, 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 you, a customer is to recommend you to a friend or family member, why people track that so closely and care about it. So it's a very compelling reason to really care about CX, and it's why it's on the top of management agenda today. So I'm going to get a little personal now and take a step back and talk about my journey. How did I end up in this space? Uh, because it's pr probably pretty relevant for most, many of you who are graduating from school and thinking about what you're going to do. So I'm hoping this inspires you a little bit to think about opportunities and really be open to anything that comes your way. When I entered this space, there wasn't really a space called customer experience, actually. I first started out, um, as was mentioned, uh, out of business school, going to work in a management training program at Sheraton Ho Hotels and Resorts. That's where I met Leora, actually. Um, and so I started out in property operations in the New York hotels. <clears throat> and then I ended up going into a corporate marketing role. And at the time, there was no such thing as guest experience. We called it guest satisfaction research. And that's really what it was thought about and how it was done. And then I ended up running um, the Global Reservations Office. So it was a really uh, great backdrop for a career and customer experience because not only um, did I really have uh, great exposure to frontline guest experience in the hotel, but also um, all of the different functions that you think about from operations to marketing, even the back office of companies are really critical in providing great customer experiences. And so it's really important that that exposure to understanding all of those different areas and really thinking about the impact that they can have and the end result of the customer experience. So we founded Medallia in 2000. There were five of us um, who originally started the company. And um, as mentioned, we have over 2,000 employees today. So I'm going to tell you a story, one of my very first lessons in customer experience. And thankfully, um, Dennis explained what the Net Promoter Score is, so I don't have to do that. <laughs> um, but this is a story about turning detractors into promoters. <laughs> and ultimately, when I was in New York, one of my very first um, assignments, my role, part of my role was to do forecasting and revenue management. So um, for those of you who are familiar with forecasting and revenue management, thankfully today there are computer systems that do that for you. But back in this day and age, I was doing it on an Excel spreadsheet. And we had 2,400 rooms in that hotel. And um, you know, we had to, I had to forecast the arrivals and the departures. And oh, by the way, there was also uh, no cancellation penalties at that day and age. So just because somebody made a reservation doesn't mean that they were going to show up. So um, <laughs> there was this, uh, you know, oftentimes we'd end up with these big citywide conventions, and there would be a bunch of people who would show up that we didn't, or a bunch of no-shows, and so my forecast might be a little bit off. 
And the goal was always to get to 100% occupancy without overselling the hotel. That was like the perfect result. But sometimes we would oversell the hotel. And so we'd end up having to do something that's called walking the guest. Now that is a very bad euphemism for a very bad experience. Basically, you show up at a hotel, you think you have a reservation, it turns out they've sold your room and you don't have a place to stay. And so in times like that, when it was a citywide convention, there was absolutely no rooms in New York City to take them to, we would have to walk the guest all the way back to a hotel at the airport where they'd just come from an hour ride. It was uh, not a very good experience. Um, anyway, there was one time when we actually had, um, we knew we were, had oversold the hotel, and um, we thought, this is, we can do something different and better here. And uh, it turns out that there was a brand new hotel that had just opened down a couple blocks away. And uh, because it had just opened, they weren't actually sold out. They were the only hotel in the city that weren't sold out. But normally, we would never have walked the guests to that hotel because it was a Four Seasons hotel. <laughs> And you always ended up walking the guests to a hotel that was either the same class or below because you had to pay for that room as the hotel that was actually, you know, had the reservation. But we ended up blocking some rooms at the Four Seasons and uh, instead of actually waiting till the, somebody came in and they didn't have a room, um, we actually looked at our arrivals list for that day, the next day, and we took our best customers, the one who had stayed with us before, business customers who were only staying for one night, and we booked them a room at the Four Seasons. And so when they showed up at the hotel, at the Sheraton Hotel, we explained the situation and we said, you have a room tonight at the Four Seasons. Well, needless to say, they were delighted. <laughs> so um, anyway, this is, I think, one of the big lessons is that if you really sit down and you look at the information, you think about this carefully, and you proactively manage things, you really can turn, make sure you turn bad experiences into good ones, or you can really think about how to create the best experiences possible for your customers. <clears throat> The second story is around what happened when Sheraton um, was acquired by Starwood. Starwood Hotels was very, very customer focused in terms of thinking about how to provide great, broader experiences for customers. Because there's kind of that one-on-one -on -one interaction that you have with every single guest and trying to make that the best possible. But it's also really important to make sure that you're creating better experiences for all of your customers through innovation. And so <laughs> Sheraton actually had a loyalty program that was not very good. Part of the problem was that the hotel owners really did not want to provide rooms during very busy times. And so there were lots of um, blackout dates where you couldn't get a, a reward, use your reward certificate. And that's really the biggest value of loyalty programs. And so it wasn't a very valuable loyalty program because you didn't have the opportunity to use your, your um, accrued rewards. Well, Starwood saw that that was an issue and they basically enforced hotel owners to have very few blackout dates. And so the Starwood Preferred Guest Program was one of the best, repeatedly named the best loyalty program in the industry for years. And it created a lot of loyalty with the brand. Starwood also um, came up with an innovation called W Hotels. I still remember when they first came up with it and I thought, W, that's gotta be a code name. Nobody would ever call a brand a, a letter of the alphabet. But no, it was not a code name, um, that's the real name. But really this idea of design hotels and lifestyle hotels really came about um, with W Hotels. It was the very first one. So again, looking at what customers were interested in and their needs and meeting that need. <clears throat> so when we started Medallia, what was the problem that we set out to solve? Well, the original, two, uh, the original couple that had the idea for Medallia, um, they were basically consultants that used to go around traveling a lot doing customer satisfaction research. And they would repeatedly stay in the same hotel and they would have a um, be in, checked in by the same front desk agent and uh, have every single time it was a bad experience. Um, now they had provided feedback via survey or via comment card, uh, but at the time, surveys were sent out manually in the mail and they had 40 or 50 questions and it would be scanned in and sent to the corporate office and if you were lucky, you know, you might take a sheet out of the binder and send it to the hotel, but it certainly wasn't actionable, right? So we knew that with the power of technology, we could change all of that. As Dennis has said, experiences are all about the people. The people need to understand what behaviors they have that are being positively impacting the customer experience or negatively impacting it so that they can change. So getting that information to the frontline employees so that they can take action was critically important, and that was the problem that we were trying to solve with technology. So we had this um, metaphor called the Customer Experience Central Nervous System when we first started the company. 
It's a really powerful metaphor. And I think when you're actually starting a company and when you're thinking about envisioning something, having a metaphor that you can relate to that is something you're aiming for is really, really helpful. So when you think about what does it mean to be the central nervous system of customer experience for a company, you know, a central nervous system can take in all different kinds of input, inputs. It can quickly assimilate it, right? It can take quick action when you need to. So if you touch something hot, you don't even think about it. You just react and pull your hand away, right? It can also have strategic um, thoughts where you can plan ahead and, and make big changes. And so, um, and it's present throughout your entire body, right? So that was the metaphor we used. We wanted to be the customer experience central nervous system for the largest companies on the planet. And so that means that we wanted to understand every interaction. We wanted it to be able to give that information to every employee. We wanted to be able to have tailored insights for the employees so that they can look at their own behaviors or you can have functions that are looking at the things that they need to solve. And we also wanted to be able to drive prioritized actions that you take care of the things that are really important first and to do that all in real time. So that was our original vision, to build a software platform that would do all of this for the largest enterprises in the world. And this is an idea that caught on. Um, we are driving customer-centric trans customer transformation for the largest enterprises in the world, not just in hospitality and travel, in many different industries. <clears throat> and now there's a whole space called experience management, um, that there are software platforms that do this for companies, and people are talking about experience. So it's really great to have seen this space evolve all these years um, to be a part of that. And I'm going to share a few stories here about some of our customers so that you can kind of bring this to life, okay? So <laughs> the first story is about Best Western. We started working with Best Western in 2007, and really it was to um, understand the post-day guest feedback. So we would um, send out surveys um, via email, and people would respond to them and um, say how they were doing. But when you think about every interaction, that's only a portion of the interactions that you have, right? Some customers, you don't actually have their email address, or um, maybe they just don't respond to surveys. And so they were getting about 1 million uh, responses a year. Yet they had three million um, social media reviews out there that they weren't really able to listen to. And so um, in 2012, we added social um, reviews to the platform. So that basically the GMs could go into one place, get all of that information, and quickly take action and respond back, even through the social media site. <laughs> and what we found was that um, we know that social is super important. Uh, about one third of travelers who've booked a hotel will change it once they see a bad review on a social media site. But what we found was not only were there many more reviews, which is actually super helpful because when, cust when the customers see a hotel engaging online with them, they tend to be much more proactive in providing reviews, but also they were giving higher scores. And it had nothing to do with the fact that we were actually helping them collect those reviews. It's just that that engagement alone was causing a, a great cycle of feedback and of better performance. The next story is about Marriott. Um, Dennis mentioned how brands like Marriott and Hilton are really great at processes. It's really important for their brands to actually have that consistency. That has been the strength of these large hotel brands is the consistency across their hotel portfolio. And a lot of that is some of its brand standards in, time, in the physical product, you know, how many hotels you have, um, what the logo is, but a lot of it is in operational procedures and behaviors um, and how the employees are trained to, um, to serve guests. So um, Marriott really is very focused on having every employee understand their impact on guest experience. They have 100,000 employees and associates using Medallia, and they get 14 million pieces of feedback a year that they are looking at and actioning. Now, <clears throat> this is also really interesting because when Marriott acquired Starwood um, back in 2016, Basically, Medallia was the first platform that they deployed across the entire portfolio. It was that important for them to have guest experience be consistent and understood by the executives across all of their, hotel, um, all, across all of their hotels. So they have 7,000 hotels all using Medallia to manage their guest experience. So Airbnb, a very worthy uh, recipient of the Icon Award, um, a great company that um, really does uh, you know, try to understand guests. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how they think about tailored insights. So Airbnb has a big constituent in terms of their hosts. Um, their hosts are um, a big, port, a big important, important part of the business, because without hosts, they wouldn't have a business, right? And so do they, not only do they try to understand customer feedback, but they're well, I'm really trying to understand what's important to their hosts and to serve their hosts well. And so experience doesn't just refer to 
customers, when we think about experience management today, it refers to your employees, all of your different stakeholders, and many companies are trying to understand those things. So many uh, companies in the hotel industry are looking at, for instance, owner feedback as well and trying to make sure that owners have great experience. But with Airbnb, they found that it's really important for the host to feel recognized. And that recognition was a big part of their overall satisfaction. And so they did some testing using the Medallia platform to really understand different programs of recognition. Um, like they would give out um, recognition for certain actions or certain activities or reaching certain milestones. <clears throat> and so they used the Medallia platform to try and test which ones were most relevant and would provide the guest host with the highest feeling of recognition and satisfaction. And what they found was that the, um, they put, could put programs in place that really helped hosts um, feel more uh, loyal to the brand. So the net promoter score for hosts, how, how much would hosts recommend being host on Airbnb, but also... Um, you know, helped their overall loyalty um, and recognition scores. <clears throat> so, finally, the last example I'm going to give is Delta. Delta is a really great brand. Um, they have very unique in the airline industry in terms of how they're recognized for their customer experience. You don't really think about, when you think about customer experience, airlines do not come to the top of your mind, do they? Uh, kind of right above telcos and government. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, Delta has really um, tried to focus on the customer experience um, since their merger with Northwest, and it's been a huge competitive advantage for them. They really do a lot with prioritized actions, that final piece of the puzzle. Right? So they're really trying to look at how to create new products and services that are really going to meet customer needs better. So they um, capture feedback across five customer journey touch points, from the airport services to in-air, the cabin, condition, reservations, care, and so forth. And they have 80,000 employees using yeah. products and services that are really going to meet customer needs better. So they um, capture feedback across five customer journey touch points, from the airport services to in-air, the cabin, condition, reservations, care, and so forth. And they have 80,000 employees using Medallion to understand their impact on the customer experience. <clears throat> so they're a great example not only of kind of operational CX, how you actually use this to coach employee behaviors, but also how you actually think about bigger innovations that we talked about. So um, I'm going to tell a story about one innovation here, which is going to be a little shocking. But um, there was a point in time where um, there weren't snacks on airplanes. Do you remember this time? They gave up snacks, and then all of a sudden they brought back snacks. Um, so what happened was customers were complaining about being on flights and not having anything to eat. And so Delta's like, maybe we should think about this snack thing again. And they actually did some testing on the impact of snacks on airplanes using Medallia. And uh, they found that it was actually did increase customer loyalty, and it, would, um, it did allow them to charge more, right? Because they really do charge a premium delta over other airlines. Um, so you can see here, they have actually quite a substantial revenue premium, which is part of how they achieve such great results. But ultimately, this was a $40 million decision. It costs $40 million for them to put snacks on airplanes. I know that's shocking because it's like a bag of pretzels, but $40 million. And so they made this $40 million decision to do it, to bring it back. And now you see every other airline has followed suit, right? Well, onboard, um, onboard product and services is just one area. They use this to measure airport services. They've made big renovations to some of their um, hub uh, airports as a result of this. And also they use a lot of, um, they use Medallia to test things on their app and on the website, because digital experiences, as we know, are a huge part of experiences today. So we found that at Medallia that companies that widely share feedback with employees are, create nine times as many innovations as those that do not. So this is why it's so important to share customer feedback widely across an organization. Now, when Ed Bastian, the CEO of Delta, was asked to sum up his job in five words, he said, taking care of our people. Now, this is not just a leadership philosophy at Delta. They actually have paid out, from 2019 and five years back, they paid out more than a billion dollars annually in profit sharing to their employees. The only company that's ever done that. Now, obviously with the pandemic, it was a little more challenging, but um, they actually became profitable again in, um, in uh, 2021, uh, the fourth quarter, and so they did pay out profit sharing in February. So Delta is a great example of how a focus on employees can lead to, um, you know, a, 
focus on the customer experience, but also it's really important now, this is something that we're seeing, is that employee experience is becoming a bigger and bigger part of the conversation today. And that's only accelerated with the pandemic. We know that more and more people are looking, or willing to switch jobs. Apparently there was a study that said 41% of the workforce is looking to switch jobs this year. So um, this is the top of the man management agenda, and the interesting thing is that companies can use platforms like Medallia to understand the employee experience in the same way that they understand the customer experience. People are getting more and more feedback from employees, looking at the employee journey from onboarding all the way to exit, figuring out how they can take action right away in the moment. So we know that companies that are adapting and changing more quickly are more successful. And you see the average lifespan of companies, it was 38 years in 1980, it's down to about 18 years now. These are companies on the S&P um, 500. So basically that's shifting around a lot and the companies that are becoming really successful and having a lot of market value, are, um, it's just short-lived these days, right? And so, um, and they're forecasting it to be down to 12 years. Now we have a great example in this space, right? Airbnb, current market cap of about 110 billion, founded in 2008, right? Marriott and Hilton combined, their market cap is less than that, and they're almost 100 years old, right? <laughs> so what is the future of experience management? How can organizations adapt more quickly? Well, they're looking at bringing more and more signals on, not just surveys, social, and so forth, but voice, so speech, video. How do we, all of the interactions that we have with company on their website, in their app, how do we understand um, how people feel about those experiences? So that's really important. They're looking at expanding beyond customers' employees to the ecosystem, to partners, and things like brokers and insurance. <laughs> Using artificial intelligence and machine learning to take all of that unstructured data and really provide quick insights back and not just action it through humans, but also directly in systems. So for instance, if you had a meeting planner that had a bad experience at this hotel, wouldn't they want the, the group sales manager to reach out to them through Salesforce directly? Or if you, somebody booked a wedding in this hotel six months out, maybe they're a good candidate for a marketing campaign for a honeymoon location, right? So um, these are the kinds of things that are happening now and it's all automated. And not only is technology enabling this, but it's really important to tie it into your business processes your leadership get behind it and make sure that, that the people in your company are acting on it and also tying it to your purpose. So I'm going to tell one last story, which is about the Veterans Administration, far afield from um, hospitality, I know, but I think it's really interesting to, when you talk about purpose. They were an organization in crisis. Um, when, we, when they became a Medallia customer, they had a recent scandal where they had a lot of medical systems where there were long wait times for veterans. As a matter of fact, Many veterans passed away in the interim while they were waiting for medical care. It was really um, sad. But they set out to fix those issues and regain veteran trust. And so they collect signals on 107 different aspects of the veteran experience. And they use uh, the artificial intelligence to understand the tone and language of those experiences that the veterans are having. Well, <laughs> the interesting thing is that what they found is that that technology that we use for customer experience, that understand tone and language, it was identifying veterans who were at risk of suicide. And so they basically use the system now to understand when a, a veteran is in crisis. And they've identified 3,000 veterans and they proactively reach out to them from their veteran's office and they've managed to save 1,400 people as a result. So um, it's really, when you think about purpose, the system is actually saving lives now, which is pretty amazing. So in closing, I just wanna um, say you know, <laughs> one thing about Come back to purpose. Um, Fred Reichelt, who is the founder of NPS, he wrote a new book that says Winning on Purpose. It's called Winning on Purpose. And he says that in this book, that the ultimate purpose of companies is to enrich lives. So if any of you have had your lives enriched by a company who is a Medallia customer, or if any of you use Medallia in your daily work, and that enriches your ability to serve your purpose for your companies, I can't think of any better why than that. Thank you.